It's a real pleasure to meet you, Jimmy O. Yang. Um, I've heard lots about you, all good things about you. you oh, seem, I hope so, I hope so. And you seem to be just really riding a wave at the moment of just success and being positive and putting out great content. You kind of, you straddle many, you wear many hats. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an actor, you're a writer, you're a comedian, you're a stand-up, you do so many things and you seem to be really finding yourself in the public eye and succeeding in front of us and it's it's a joy to be with you so thank you thank you thanks for being here today with mr feelgood i wanted to ask you just before we get on to the questions just you know about the comedy aspect what mm. what what part of your um the various disciplines that you commit yourself to do you find the most joy i try to find joy in everything i do in the moment you right. know so if it's stand up you know the, there's so much joy that comes with that on figuring out a new joke, uh, going on the road, getting to try the new food and hang out my opener and things like that. And then when it's acting, you know, when it's a good group of people, there's nothing better, you know, and then you, you figure out certain moments and then you feel good when you do well on a scene. You stress, but that still feels good sometimes. Right. Um, uh, and then also writing, it's amazing. I get to stay in my house and really come up with a story and tell a story the way I want to. So I think everything, there's ebb and flows, there's good, good times, bad times, right. but uh, I, I try to find joy in all of them. And you've been, and you've been what, 10 years now you've been sort of honest? Yeah, I started stand-up, I started my first open mic when I was 21, so I'm 34 now, so it's wow. 13 years, yeah. And I mean, I always thought about stand-up, I mean, it takes an extraordinary amount of courage, I think, or is it just madness? Do you overthink it? What happens? It's you... both. It's courage, okay. but more desperation. Oh. When you have nothing else going on in your life, you know, going right. up on an open mic and torturing yourself every night doesn't seem so bad, you know? Oh. It seemed better than the alternative. I was like, at least I'm out of the house and I'm meeting new friends. So right. okay. I didn't mind it. I never looked at stand-up as work, especially in the beginning. Wow, I think it takes an amazing amount of courage to do that. I, I think, think so. <laughs> and, and now you're working, you know, um, you're on Space Force, you mm -hmm. know, you did Silicon Valley, you've got all these great sort of projects going on. And your dad's acting as well. I yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, and he is in both season one and season two of Space Force. That's amazing. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a whole crazy thing because, you know, there's an older scientist character that they wrote. I didn't write this episode in season one and Greg Daniels, our showrunner, mm -hmm. was like, you know, it's always the same couple of older Asian guys. You right. know, we need to find some new blood. And I had inadvertently just told John Malkovich, like, hey, you know, my dad's also an actor. Just kind of as an anecdote, like a funny... And then John was like, how, how about Jimmy's dad? Oh, and no, I'm no. like, oh. So oh, John, are you sure about this? And so he just came in. How was that, having your dad in, a, in, a, in scenes with John Malkovich and... Even it's I was intimidated. Amazing, you know, It's right? John Malcolm, yeah, one know, of the greatest I know, actors I know. of our generation, right? right. Um, but my dad had no fear, it's you know? cool. Because uh, he doesn't, I mean, he does care to be famous now, I guess, but he doesn't care, like, that's not his thing, right. you know? Okay. So he just comes in as an outsider and he just had fun with it. Oh. And it was such a natural, yeah, honestly, yeah, you know? Yeah, it was yeah. such a natural. And then I wrote an episode in season two. I know, amazing. And I, I wrote him in and he was just so fun. He and he was, wasn't like pushing back on you and saying, no son, it's not like that. He would do that. Did he no, no, he, he's a great sport. He's yeah. a great sport. He's very grateful. And he's just one of the guys now. Like like everyone like was asking, hey, when is your dad coming? When is your dad coming? So he's like a nice mascot on set. And, oh, and he brilliant. delivers. He does, does he? he amazing, isn't it? Maybe, maybe because he doesn't have the fear. And maybe that's, you've got a bit of his. No fear growing up. Yeah, yeah, but it is funny to see, okay, maybe he's an older Asian guy, doesn't get it, but he ha has good natural instincts. Yeah. That's great, but yeah. he's starting to get the anxiety of an actor that I'm starting to see. It's like, hey, what happened to this oh, one scene I shot? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they cut out stuff every now and then. He's like, yeah, but I, I think I was yeah, very funny, yeah. you know? And then after we finished shooting, he was like, did I do good? Did I, did, oh. was I okay? You know, which is what every <laughs> actor asks. So he, he's, he's getting to that very neurotic phase of an actor. Oh dear, just like maybe all it's time to retire. and Just yeah. enjoy I know. watching his son. Yeah, 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 awesome. I'm, but I'm like that. You know, this is this is very common for an actor. Yeah, even yeah. I do this. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. anyone would do this, yeah. except John Malkovich. He's yeah, so yeah. good. He he's, doesn't do he's, that. He's on another. We planet, all worry. He? Oh, he's incredible. Um, doing research on you, Jimmy, I did feel that there was so much. There's a real, there's a real serious kind of peaceful, poetic side to you. Oh. I felt that you you are very sensitive to vulnerability and to the truth of comedy. And I think because comedy and drama are very similar. Mm -hmm. I, I felt that you, 
you know, we all look at comedians and think, oh, aren't they funny and the entertainers and everything, but you definitely have a, you've got a, a gravitas within you that's noticeable, I think, that sort of leads one to think, well, you, you really think it through. You're not just some sort of superficial show pony. You really get, get the job done. Yeah, I think it's a growth that a lot of comics, a lot of actors go through in the beginning. You're just trying to survive on stage, be funny, tell right. some dick jokes, right. whatever. Right. But really, great comedy comes from vulnerability yeah. and truth, just like good acting and good writing. So digging for that, that's what's interesting. You know, Sure, I can go on stage and tell a hacky joke and get a laugh, mm -hmm. but when I'm starting to you know, talk about my life mm -hmm. in a very real way uh, mm -hmm. and be vulnerable, there might be moments that you know, it's not always ha-ha laughing, mm -hmm. but you're trying to make a point and tell a story and then you try to make that funny and, and look at a different perspective. I think that's what I'm interested in. And even in writing, even writing comedy, the parts, okay, I can write a joke in, in the script or whatever, but the part that really interests me, it's just the human condition, mm. like finding relatability and, mm. and metaphors and things mm. that people can watch and be like, oh, that's so true for me, even though I don't work in Space Force. Right. You know, this, I can relate to this. Right. Yeah, well, it comes through. It comes through with what you do. And it's, it's sort of, it's what we try and do at Mr. Feelgood. We just try and relate to people and yeah. f really focus on what unites us as opposed to what breaks us apart. So. Yeah, even, I mean, like this interview, it's, yeah. it's just a candid conversation instead of like the pop, like five second yeah, yeah, question. Yeah. Hey, if you were to go to space, who would you take? Yeah. You know, I, trust me, I've been asked that a thousand times. Okay. Well, look, let's get started. Um, who are you? Who am I? Uh, I'm Jimmy O. Yang, and uh, I'm just any other guy that try to do his job, I think. You know, uh, it happens to be a job in the public eye. Uh, uh, try to make people laugh, and I, I try to make people feel good. Boom. Okay. And how are you feeling right now? I feel pretty good. Yeah. A beautiful house you have here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very into... Uh, this kind of mid-century and architecture, it's, 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 it's beautiful. And if I dig deeper, how are you feeling in your life about uh, right now? I feel good. You feel, I feel good? good? I think um, I take time to be grateful about a lot of things because a lot of times you just get so caught up. It's like from outside looking in, you know, my career is going great. Like I'm doing a lot of things, but then I can always nitpick and get into wrong. It's like, why, why am I not getting this job? Why am I not doing more of this or whatnot, right? Uh, but I think it's just, you, you need to be grateful about mm -hmm. everything and, and, and look at it from almost an outsider perspective sometimes. Be like, dude, I'm fucking doing great. Yeah. I have no complaints, man. Being here you know? now. Yeah. yeah, and everything else is just a bonus. Right on. Um, where did you grow up and what was it like? I grew up in Hong Kong uh, for the first 13 years of my life. Um, it's quite a different world. You know, it's a very big metropolitan city a concrete jungle and not a lot of greeneries and parks or whatnot. But I, I loved it. You can walk everywhere, don't need a car, and just so many people, so much energy. It's very much like New York. I was gonna um, say, it sounds like New York, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I came to LA when I was 13, so I still spent half of my formative years in LA. And it was just a culture shock, you know, this is very wide open land. You need a car to get by. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just walk from one strip mall to another mm -hmm. mall, you know. Uh, but I think instead, like the first couple of years, I think a lot of immigrants, a lot of people move to a new country do this. It's like you try to relive your old life. Mm -hmm. You try to walk everywhere in LA. Mm -hmm. You try to find Chinese food, whatever, right? But it, it, and then you realize it's not about that. It's like, okay, Hong Kong is great at that, but what does Hong Kong not have that LA have that I enjoy, you know, I enjoy just going on hikes, you know, mm -hmm. going on a pool, having, mm -hmm. a, having a pool, having a dog, mm -hmm. you know, and, and eating the different food here. So instead mm -hmm. of trying to force your life into the previous mold, yeah. I try to express and explore the new yeah, one. Enjoy yeah. the yeah. new one. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, what excites you? Mm. I think when things work, you know, uh, we, we all want to be right. Right. So in my world, okay, uh, I could be right about something when I'm arguing with my girlfriend. Okay, that's mm -hmm. good. I think everyone can relate to that. But a day, day to day in my job, it's to prove that you're right to feel sane as a comic is when a joke works. Mm -hmm. When you think something is funny, you take it on stage and then the audience laugh and then you're like, I feel good. That must feel this good. This is right. I'm, not, I'm not crazy. You that's know, awesome. people, people buy this. And, people, and also you're giving something to people to remember, to go away with, and they'll mm -hmm. always remember that. It's like a gift in the moment. And I think if you can make people laugh, man, it's such a 
blessing. It's a joy. I it think, is, yeah. yeah, there were a few years where I kind of stopped doing stand up. I was like, ah, you know, I'm fine. I don't need to go on the road. I don't need to do this, do that. Because uh, I was doing fine acting. But you just, there's nothing like that immediate response mm. of seeing people laughing and, and, and feeling that joy from the whole room. That, that's very, very fun. And, and how about theater? Have you ever done theater? Or was that something that you'd like to do at some point where you kind of, you know, you, 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 you have to be stuck with an actual character that someone else is writing, so you can't really I know. improvise. I, I, I haven't done theater. It is something I'll be interested in. Uh, but the one thing that scares me is that you have to commit to this script. You mm -hmm. can't really improvise mm -hmm. in theater, not that I know of, you know. You have to commit to this script for three months, you know, mm -hmm. 10 shows a week or mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. That just, uh, uh, the, the, the monotony of that, Right, interesting. Yeah, worries me a lot. Yeah, well, what scares you? What scares you in life? What scares you? Height. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the ocean. Uh, no. Um, failure. I think all, all of us had a, have a little bit of that. Um, it seems easy, like when I get on stage and make people laugh, but there's just so much preparations that go into every bit of that. I'm so scared to fail. I prepare a lot, and and, right. and even. When I'm playing video games with my friends, you know, uh, I, I don't like to play games I'm not good at. Right. If we play a game of Madden, I've probably trained at Madden in my own house already for a few months. Okay. So, um, oh, you're a method Madden player. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, what's your proudest achievement? Oh, wow. That's a big one. They're all big ones. The first 15 are anyway, but go on. Yeah, my proudest achievement... Um, thus far. Thus far. There's so many, you know. Uh, uh, I'm not big on awards or anything, and I haven't won anything like a big award. But, you know, uh, I got an award at the Def, Def Jam Movie Awards, which oh, is yeah. not like a, the most prevalent award, yeah. but the thing was... It was my favorite people growing up was yeah. in the audience. Yeah. It was like Snoop Dogg was there, yeah. Don Magic Wand yeah. Exhibit, whoever. So I was like, this is cool. Like they don't, they might not know who I was, but I gave them a shout out. So, you know, if it's a physical thing, that, 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 that might be it. But honestly, um, the movie Crazy Rich Asians, you know, oh, yeah, that was that's something where I found my creed, right my on. friends, right still on. some of my best friends and, and knowing what it did uh, for the culture and, and, and for entertainment, you know, yeah. just, I saw my life change after that, uh, people are more open to Asian contents and, and, and we're all proud. So that really changed a lot. And obviously I'm just very grateful to be part of it. I can't take credit for a lot of it, but, um, that was, that was very cool. It was amazing. It was so well acted, so well cast as well. It was great yeah. for us to watch. It's incredible. Um, Okay, what's the hardest thing you've ever done, do you think? Mm. Oh, man. Honestly, acting was quite hard. Stand-up, um, a lot of people talk about stage fear. I never really had stage fear. I was a very good public speaker. I just had to figure out my jokes. Hmm. Uh, but acting was hard. Uh, uh, I had to take a lot of classes. I think I have a good instinct about stuff. But still, I have to learn it. And, and you know what's the hardest part about acting, especially in the beginning, is audition. Oh. That's a totally oh, yeah. different sport. Yeah. I can yeah. show up on set, yeah. I can be good, but yeah. auditioning in front of when, when there's just two casting directors, mm -hmm. reading lines very robotically, and mm -hmm. you have to perform, and knowing this is how you get a job. That, that was difficult, and I think one of the hardest part I had to learn was to be a good listener, mm. in life and in mm. my job, because mm. as a comedian, you might listen to the audience, you might feel the audience out, but there's not like a conversation happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you on stage at a monologue, right? And, and we're so self-absorbed that way. And, and a lot of times I don't, I see stand-up comedians don't transition well to acting because they don't listen to their partners. They go in with a game plan, they plan something because that makes us feel safe, mm -hmm. right? We mm -hmm. all do that. Mm -hmm. We want to do well in something, we plan. Mm -hmm. But in acting, you have to let go. Mm. So really, when I say acting, maybe being the hardest part, but the hardest part maybe is just letting go and trusting 
your, your instinct and yeah. trusting your partner. What did Brando said you learn the lines and chuck them away, I think. Yeah. And then the other True. thing that came to me was the, the, the quote, luck favors the prepared mind. And you see, and you're an economist, weren't you? Did you study? <laughs> I wasn't an economist. Oh, no, you weren't, but you I studied, studied economy. Oh, you studied economy. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, so, I'm so, not Alan Greenspan. Yeah. Oh, no. You know? But you must have a very meticulous process, I would think. If you, if you, you do put the time in and you do, you're meticulous in writing jokes and writing scripts, you've really got it second to second, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a lot not, of... It's uh, not just throwing it out What did there. it call? The left brain? That's your yeah, you yeah. Know, logistics yeah, and yeah. like the, 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 the details to being a good student. Yeah. But really, you got to study with all that, get prepared. And then when you get on set, you better be in a moment yeah. and throw all that away and just yeah. be in the moment. And I mean, you really were thrown in with some really good actors, so I'm sure you've oh. got to be brave to start there and then to learn off them and to absorb and then to bring your own game and to and not beat yourself up because a lot of actors do that. Obviously, oh, I still do I beat myself do. up, but I was, you know, I was very <laughs> fortunate to start on Silicon Valley. That was yeah, like a master class for me of comedy. You know, it was such a great uh, group of people with the crew and the directors and the producers as well. And then, yeah, with Space Force, Steve Carell. He's amazing. John Malkovich. I was nervous, but yeah. I still learn from him every day. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, who was your greatest mentor and what did they teach you? Oh, wow. Um, I, uh, I love that you haven't read the questions. That's so cool. You know, uh, or maybe I'm just lazy. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when I was starting comedy in San Diego, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Sean Kelly, he was uh, maybe 20 years older than me. And he just really took me under his wings, not just teaching me about comedy so much, but about the business side of things, you know, mm -hmm. how you present yourself and just making good life decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it as a comic. Nobody was sure of that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I had a lot of odd jobs. I sold used cars, I DJed at a strip club, mm -hmm. this and that. And, and the DJ at a strip club wasn't the best environment. It was mm -hmm. kind of dangerous. And yeah. Sean was the one that's like, hey, man, you're funny enough. I need you to take a chance right now and move away from San Diego where I went to college. Get away from all this bullshit, you know, and then go to L.A. and try it out, man. Just just do it. Um, and, and just watching him uh, approach his business side of things, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that, was, that was very helpful and he taught me a lot. That's cool. Amazing. Yeah. You were, how old were you when you did that? 21, 22? I was like, yeah, 21, 22, a couple years in a stand-up, you know, and uh, Sean was probably like 40. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. You still pals? You still yeah, tell? That's absolutely. Great. That's yeah. great. Um, who are your fictional and real-life heroes? Fictional and real-life. Mm, fictional heroes. I don't know. I don't know if I have any fictional heroes. I'm not a could big be, superhero okay, could worshiper. Be. Okay. You know, to me, a fictional hero almost means like someone that's that's a real person, but doesn't seem real to you because you're like so famous or whatever. Like like right, a okay. like a Michael Jordan mm -hmm. or like a, a a Robert De Niro or something. Mm -hmm. To me, those people almost seem fictional. I almost don't want to meet them. Right. You know, and of course they're so talented. It's 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 amazing to see. And what and, about real life though? Uh, real life, uh, maybe people I met, it's, it would honestly be like uh, Steve Carell mm -hmm. or John Malkovich because they're so amazingly talented but yet so kind and so giving, you know, as scene partners, as just friends also. As humans. Like, yeah, I yeah. I mean, that's amazing. That's great to hear. This. Yeah, they, you totally forget you're talking to John right. Malkovich. It's right. just your friend John and it's, it's, it's very cool. And I, I, like it's, I say they're my heroes because if, if I do get to that phase in my life, if, if I do achieve that kind of success, you know, I want to be as nice. Yeah, that's good. Play it forward. open as they are, yeah. That's a great lesson to learn, right? Absolutely. Beautiful. Um, okay. What is your favorite item of clothing in your wardrobe? I think this jacket I right think here. I so too, man. I love that jacket. I, it's so simple. I can throw yeah. it on anywhere, any type of weather in LA and... Um, it's from Japan, you know. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm a pretty small guy, you know, and the Asian frame is different than like uh, the standard American frame. I remember when I was, especially when I was a kid, before all the slim cut and stuff, mm -hmm. when I first came to America, you go buy a piece of clothing in Macy's, uh, Macy's, even if I buy small, extra small, it's so big on me, right. and the sleeves are always too long, right. I have to alter everything. Right. Right. And a few years ago, I went to Japan, I'm like, Oh wow, I feel great. Everything fits me perfectly. And even just that little part of the society, clothing, yeah. I felt like a normal person. I didn't mm. feel like I had to assimilate to this fit. It's like everything was made tailor-made for me. It's just perfect. Perfect. So did you buy two of them? 
Uh, no, I wish I should have. So you, know? you could get it made. You could get get it copied. Mm, that too. Um, okay. Um, what music did you love age thirteen, and do you still love it now? So when I was growing up in Hong Kong, I listened to a lot of uh, canto pop. Okay. I love all that stuff. We have the four heavenly gods of canto pop. Okay. Still four of the most famous: here. Jackie Chung, oh, uh, yeah. Leon Lai, Andy Lau, and um, my favorite Aaron Kwok. You know, and each of them has a different person. So I love listening to that stuff. Forgive me up. if I'm looking blank. I don't know. No, no. You should. Sorry, nobody sorry, knows sorry. them outside yeah, okay. of Hong Kong. Okay. You know. So uh, and but they're still some of my favorites. You know, and I absolutely love them. But. When I came to America, it was hip hop that absolutely, you know, grabbed that me. That got you going. Oh, I loved it. The West Coast, East Coast beef, you know, and then yeah, Dirty yeah, South yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah. I loved all of that stuff. And for me, when you talk about throwback music or if I, like what kind of music I listen to, at a, love to listen to at a party and I hope the DJ plays, it's 2000s hip hop. I love it. Right on. Um, hmm, what's the most inspiring book you've ever read? Uh, read sorry. Oh, this is interesting. Um, hmm. I love the power of now. That sounds like Eckhart a Tolle. basic thing. Yeah, yeah Eckhart yeah, Tolle. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, uh, okay, some great books give you good information, put you in different pers uh, it makes you learn about stories, a different perspective, whatever it may be. It takes you to a different world like Harry Potter or whatnot. But Eckhart's book like really changes your view of yourself and the world, you know, and what joy is, what happiness is. and. Every now and then I still go back and... and Do you underline? It. Yeah, I have, uh, I have the thick one where, mm -hmm. where, I, where I have highlights hmm. and folded corners. And then they have like a travel size one too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what is a movie that left a lasting impression on you? Oh, know, right? <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, there's so many classics, you know, Shawshank Redemption, uh, uh, Goodfellas, you know, Forrest yeah. Gump. I love those movies that just, it just follows a person's life, you know, and it's so cool to me, and so Americana, mm -hmm. even like something like Dazed and Confused, mm -hmm. and just like so American, American graffiti. Mm -hmm. But recently, I would say, uh, uh, more recently, I love the movie Drive. Oh yeah, amazing. Beautifully shot, Gorgeous not a lot shot. of dialogue, yeah. it just, and Ryan Gosling, he really does so much yeah. by doing so little. Yeah. And I think it just teaches you a lesson that uh, less is more. Yeah, that's a masterclass in acting, that mm -hmm. one, for sure. Um, what is your favorite word or saying? <laughs> <laughs> as dirty as you like, uh, or as clean as you like, no. Yeah, I, you, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, um, so I, I speak a couple dialects in, in Chinese. Mandarin, mm -hmm. if some curse words. Shanghainese, I speak my parents, mm -hmm. which is some great curse words. And certain things I can't even translate necessarily you know uh, like this one word um, you call somebody laza laza ying that means somebody is laza you can it's it almost mean an honest person mm -hmm. you know like but it's almost derogatory if somebody is too laza that means they're almost you can trick them in this stuff and and you don't want to be you know too honest you want to be a little more cunning in that in Chinese culture so sort of not too earnest earnest can be a bit dull a lot of, it's like the, the mixture between dull and earnest and honest, you know, okay. it's, and it's... What about in English? Is there a word you use all the time that kind of comes to mind? Uh, a saying? You, you know, there, there, there's a word I literally cannot say. Like, I have to think about it and say it, but I find myself using it so much is... Hang on, I'm going to try it. Specificity. There you go. That's, that, that, I struggled. Specificity. See? Specific, specificity. Specific. Specificity? Spe Specific. Spe specificity. Go on. Specificity, right? Or no? Am I saying it wrong? I don't know. Now you no, I think I'm myself. saying it. Say it again. Specificity. Specificity. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway, it's a tough word. You sound, don't do but it when I, you're I, drunk. I, I find myself using it a lot, even in writing and whatever. Being you want to be specific. Being specific. You want to be specific. Specific. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Well, this is a tough one. This is a really important one, though, I think. I think mm. this one touches me the most. Um, what do you want people to say about you at your funeral? Oh, you know, I always fantasize about faking my own death to see who will show up, you know, <laughs> or to see if Hollywood Reporter will write about me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I know I've made it. If I know if I die, then I'll, it will at least be a news story for a couple hours. Um, Oh man, I, I think I'm too young to almost answer that question. Okay. But at the same time, 
I just, I, I, I want them to see that I'm talented. You know, that seems a little vain, but yeah, I, I, I want people to say Own that. It. But also, I want people to say that he, he's a good guy that brought joy to people. You yeah. know, that I had a purpose. That's a great answer. That's yeah. a great answer. Um, quick fire, five qu favorite questions mm -hmm. or favorite subjects. What's your favorite car? Oh, you know, I just, I, I just order. I never spend money, and I just ordered a, a '66 Mustang, oh, like a, a restored one, and nice. I get to pick the color. To, I'm, I'm so stoked on it. What color? Uh, it's going to be ivy green and then beige on the inside. Oh, it's going to be really amazing. Sick. That's incredible. Sports team? Oh, the Los Angeles Clippers. Okay. Meal? That's tough. I always think about what's my last meal. Or like, what would be my last meal? Uh, I used to love this restaurant called Stinking Rose. It's a garlic restaurant. They have a great piece of prime rib and everything is garlic themed. Your breath stinks for days, but it's totally worth it. A steak then? You like a steak? Then? A prime rib or, or Korean barbecue, something like Ooh, that. Oh, yeah. Know? Um, grooming product? Mm, I have this one product. I, I, you guys have to put an insert because I, I don't know what it's. It's called Sprouts or something. It's a hair product. It's the only hair paste I use. And it's all natural. An Australian uh, uh, hair makeup artist gave it to me. Uh, there's no, no pimples and it holds very well. Natural. Sprouts. I think I'll, I'll, yeah, we'll, I'll, get, we'll, we'll just figure take a picture out. and send you an okay. insert. And then finally, clothing label. Have you got a favorite clothing label? I love finding like just indie labels, but uh, I, I don't know, like this, I don't even know what brand it is, you know, just, it's a trap. Oh, you, oh, you know, I do have a place in New York. They make great button up shirts that I love, all different patterns and very fun. Uh, they're called Descendants of Thieves. Great, so great. I love that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I think we're done. I just, uh, I just wanted to ask you, where does the Jimmy O Yang? What, what's that? Is that the, yeah. is there an Irish thing there, or what's going on? No, no, no. So uh, it's 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 a fun story there because uh, when I first went on stage, my legal name is O Yang, O U Y A N G. Okay. It's two words in right. Chinese, and and uh, of course the immigration officer spells it a million different ways. Like my me and my brother's name spelled differently. You can also spell A U Y E U N G because usually Chinese. Last name is one word, Jackie Chan, Bruce okay. Lee, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so nobody, when, when it's O U Y N G put together, it's literally four vowels. Nobody right. in the stand up comedy club right. can pronounce it O Wang, O U Wang, O Wang, you know, like what is it? So I was like, it's time for a change because I think I, I love my last name in Chinese, how it's written. It's a rare two letter last name, mm -hmm. but I hated how it looked. And, and how it's written and uh, uh, spelled out in English. So I was like, let's make it simple. Jimmy O. Yang. Yeah, it works. It's you got know? great and rhythm. Yeah. yeah, people can say it. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can call me Jimmy Yang if you want. You can call me Jimmy O. You mm -hmm. know, I know my last name is O. Yang, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, you know, they want to say it's Yang. Well, who cares? Okay. You know? Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for bringing joy Thank to you. us. Thank you for being honest with us. Thank you for brightening our day and, and your audience's day. Thank you so much. We're really feeling, nice to meet we're, you. We're feeling good. We're feeling, feeling great, good. aren't yeah. we? Great. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Man. Thank, Thank you. you.